Okay, I have this request. I have to finish. The client really, really needs it. And it's due tomorrow. Okay, I'll cut corner over here. Okay, I'll cut corner over here. That's good, that's good. Okay, this is gonna work for now. It's okay, I'll come back to this later. Okay, no, this is still good. This is still good. Okay, seems to be working. Okay, this is good for now. Maybe sometime tomorrow, in the future, a month from now, I'll go back to it. And it will work completely. No, in fact, it will just work forever. So, what is technical debt and why is it so important? Well, technical debt is something that, let's say, when you're working on a new piece of code and you're deciding to cut corners in order to make a feature to work. And by cutting corners, I mean you're not focused on the best practices of writing code. So, right now you're working on it, you solved it, it's working. And then the, the next day or a few days later, a couple of weeks, uh, depending on when it is, it starts to fail. And then you start looking at it, you realize that, well, it was more focused on, let's say, supporting 100 concurrent users. And now you have realized that, well, now you have a 1,000 uh, over uh, new users, concurrent users, using that function. And uh, now you have to, well, change it. And that is what's called technical debt, and that's how technical debt happens, is because we cut corners at the beginning to solve ticket. And uh, also, the reason why that's happening to a lot of developers is because time to time, we're not getting too much of time to work on specific features. So to developers, it's important to make things to work. But when it comes to management, they don't really care how you solve that. They don't really care about how long it took you. All they care about is, is it working right now? If it's working right now, if uh, the sales team can sell it tomorrow, well, that's great. That's what we all we care about it. So why you should know about technical debt? You're working, let's say, on your personal project right now, or you're starting to work at a startup. Little things that you do, whatever it is you might do, uh, you want to reconsider those things twice because those technical debt, they might not sound as a big of a deal right now. You might be thinking, well, if it's going to happen in the future, like, I don't really care about it. Whenever the future comes, I'm just going to deal about that later. D don't care about that, right? Every company, a startup or a project that were thinking that, they failed because of it. They didn't focus on those things. They didn't focus on any of it. And uh, they thought they will have enough time, they'll have enough resources to focus on it, to fi finish it, uh, to debug it, whatever it is. Uh, but that didn't happen because, well, the team was still focused on new features. And uh, their attention needed to be on new features to be delivered because they still had the timeline to focus on. And uh, no developer, no one else really could uh, solve those uh, problems. So the company failed because, well, it wasn't able to perform for its concurrent users. Before it was just focused on 100 people, now you have 1,000, 100,000 uh, people, uh, concurrent users coming into application. But the system can't handle it. So how do we know if we get a lot of technical debt? Well, if you take a look at your backlog, and if you notice that the number of defects, the number of those bugs coming in, the tickets that needs to be fixed is growing over and over time every day, well, that is a red flag right there. This is already something that developers need to be focused on because if you're not going to be focused on them right now as they're growing, you'll never be focused on them. And then later down the line, there will be a big problem and you won't be able to fix it. And uh, the second thing is probably performance of the application. If you notice that uh, right now you have good performance and you just have 10, 100 developers or 10, 100 uh, concurrent users, but later you have 1,000 and you see that right now the load is increasing and you're not able to, and your application is not able to satisfy every customer. And what ends up happening is customer will leave because while well, the application is too slow, it takes like 30 seconds to load instead of three milliseconds. So that's probably another fact. Also, another thing I've noticed is in incorrect time of estimation. So whenever you get a new task, a new feature to develop, let's say you've been allocated two or three days to develop. But as it turns out, it takes longer because right now that specific task depended on a different code that needs to be refactored. So right now, that is something you have to allocate time for. So instead of spending three days, now it's taking you maybe oh, four, five days uh, to, to work on that specific uh, feature. And that is something that uh, was not taken into consideration. And that's not just for one feature, that's for almost 
every other feature that will be coming in later into the project. So the delivery slows down. So what do you do? How do you go about that? How do you remove all of your debt? So what usually ends up happening is uh, as you're working on one specific uh, feature, you have to clarify with the management why you need to do that, even though they may say that it's not too big of a deal. But you have to clarify with them saying that, well, if this is what's going to be right now, if this is what we have to do, we definitely need to create a task for it saying that we do need to work on this as a next thing because it will happen. The system will break on this specific spot whenever something will happen. And uh, you probably do want to keep that as uh, documentation somewhere with you. So whenever that will happen, you'll have a proof of uh, saying that, okay, we did mention about this before in the meeting, let's say last week, a couple of months ago, saying that it will fail because of this. You have a proof. So whenever you're in a meeting right now, you're standing out, you look good, which means that the next time when something like this will happen, when you have documented or you'll be matching to a management saying that we need to focus on this, we need a little more time to make it to work, they will listen to you because in the past you have predicted it, you proved it and you saved the day. And the exact same you can do again, but this time a little bit differently and you can be in the more of a control as a developer. And uh, you do want to focus on uh, writing good code right from the beginning because what ends up happening is a lot of people that go from junior to intermediate and uh, even a senior to a senior level, they start to write bad code. They start to have bad practice and they ended up teaching other developers, other juniors, beginners, writing exact same code. So then they'll be stuck with this bad practice, with bad uh, code. And it's going to be kind of hard to reteach them. It's going to be hard for them to learn a best practice because for now they have been used to an old style of writing. So that is type of a trap you don't want to be in. So if you're writing out a uh, new code right now for this project or a startup, whatever it might be, don't rush it. Take time to understand what it is first you're trying to develop, what it is that it's going to do. So how do you avoid technical debt and then not heading the wrong path? Well, as I have mentioned before, you probably want to first document what it is you have discussed in a meeting and uh, if you're trying to cut corners or if the company is trying to cut corners. Try to first let everybody know what it is we're trying to cut or you're trying to cut and uh, what is it going to lead you? What is it going to happen? and document it for the future use, because if it will happen in the future, again, you can pull it up, show it to everybody. And uh, the way you should do that is if your company follows Scrum environment, agile development, uh, that's when you will usually uh, bring this up. And whenever you're in an agile environment, uh, everyone will be talking about exact same ticket, uh, one, one ticket at a time, and making sure that every member understands uh, the purpose of a ticket. And uh, when that happens, uh, one person will start to develop, uh, another person will start to test it. And then that's when things will be going in the right path because first everyone understood uh, the tickets, the requirements are there and there's uh, no complications. And if you do still have a question, you can still ask other developers. Number two, whenever it's been developed, it's been developed by one developer, but tested point number three, I guess, so still point of number two, uh, but it's been tested by another developer. And once it goes into a staging environment, it could be tested by a QA person, it could be tested by another developer. And uh, that way, whenever multiple people are working on the ticket by uh, one person working on it, multiple other people are testing it, that's how you can test it out to make sure that number one ticket works and number two, see if uh, any other use cases were missed. But also whenever you work on a ticket, uh, the main thing that uh, people do is writing a uh, unit tests for your ticket. And that's probably the first thing you should be doing, to be honest, before writing any code, because unit test is pretty much a definition of done of how the specific new feature is supposed to work. So let's say right now, um, the new feature is supposed to work on is when you click on a subscribe button, it subscribes you to a channel, just like you about subscribe to a dev pool and click on a like button. Um, and whenever you, the user click on a, a like or uh, subscribe button, you want to make sure that specific data has been sent to a backend and been stored and uh, whatever it is other things needs to be doing. And that is going to be your first unit test to make sure that 
it uh, matches the specific criteria of what needs to be done. And following that type of a pattern, you'll notice that you are able to develop a little bit faster. There's going to be a bit of less technical debt. And uh, what that ends up happening is, so let's say right now I'm done with my tasks. I have nothing left to do. Well, I have an extra maybe, I don't know, 20, 30 minutes to kill until next meeting or until break or whatever it is it might be. I might take a look at the backlog, see what it is we have out there and uh, try to just knock out one of those uh, easy tickets, one of those uh, dead uh, tickets. And I won't talk to you about this because everything has a cause and effect, um, not just whenever you live and do things in your life, but also whenever you write specific software. Software has the exact same thing. You have a cause, you're writing one code and you have an effect which can be good or bad, depending on how good your code is. But that's it, guys. I hope you liked it. I hope you learned something new. And I do hope that whenever you'll be working on new tasks or new uh, projects, startup companies, whatever it is you might be, you'll be considering writing uh, a good code. So to take away from this is that whenever you're writing something, don't rush it. Slow down a little bit. Make sure that you understand the feature fully, completely, and trying to remove as many uh, tech debt as possible whenever you have time. I'm Deadpool. I hope you enjoyed this video. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and I'll see you next video.